in this video we're going to create a user input prompt in Google Apps Script to perform a filter based on criteria that the user inputs in that prompt. So just to show you what we're going to build today, I have a data set of loan records. In column B we have three different loan types and I have a script button here that will generate a user prompt and require the user to input a filter value. So when I run that you can see you get this prompt that says enter loan type to filter. So I'll enter a loan type and when I click OK a new sheet will get added with just the auto loan type loans filtered on that new sheet. And there it is. So the first thing we want to do is go up to extensions and app script. Try this new editor will appear. I still like the old one so I'm going to close out of this and I'm going to name our project. We'll just call this my filter and the function will be called my user input. And we're going to begin by declaring a few variables. So the first variable is just going to be called SS for spreadsheet. It's going to represent the spreadsheet we're in now. So that's going to be equal to the spreadsheet application and then get active spreadsheet. We're going to have a variable that represents the sheet containing our loan records that we want to filter on. So we'll call this loan sheet and that is going to be equal to our spreadsheet variable and then get sheet by name and the name of the sheet is loans we're going to have a variable called UI which is short for user interface and that is going to be equal to the spreadsheet application and then we want to get the user interface. This just enables some sub options that we are looking for in this scenario like user prompts that include response buttons like OK and cancel and things of that nature. So now we're going to create a variable called my prompt and this is simply going to define the type of prompt that we want to display. So this is going to be equal to our user input variable and then we want to look for prompt and we want this one here that has a string prompt as the first argument and the type of button set we want to display in that prompt. So the message we want to display is enter loan type to filter on and then our second argument we need to reference our UI variable again and then button set and then select the type of button set we want in this case I just want OK or cancel. So now we have a variable we'll call response and that is simply going to hold the response that the user inputs based on this my prompt variable. So this is going to be equal to our my prompt variable we just created and then we want to get the response text from that variable. So now we want to perform a test because there are two possible options on our prompt button. The user can click OK or cancel. So we're going to insert an if condition and we want to check to see if in the prompt the button that the user selects is equal to 
our user interface variable and the button type being OK. If it is, we want to perform a filter on our loan records based on the text that the user specifies. But before we can do that, we need to store this entire array of records in a variable. So we have a variable called records. This is going to be equal to our loan sheet variable. And then we want to dynamically get that entire region of data, regardless of whether new rows are added or taken away. So we're going to use get data range. And then we want to get the values from that data range. So now we have a variable called my filter. And we're going to reference our records variable we just created. And we're going to perform the filter method on that set of records. And this allows you to pass a function. So it begins with the keyword function and then the syntax for a function, which is a set of parentheses and then a set of curly brackets. So in the parentheses, we're going to pass a parameter. You can really enter anything you want here. Um, I usually just use E for elements. It really just represents the elements in that two-dimensional array, which is the outer set. E by itself is the collection of rows, the outer array. So what we want to do here is in our array of records, we want to look at this second column here and see all the records that are equal to the correct the text that the user inputs. So the count for rows and columns in AppScript actually begins at zero. So column A is column zero, this is column one, this is column two. So our criteria column is column one. So we want to return only the records where our array elements and to get to the column we need to add a set of brackets next to our elements which is by itself the outer collection of rows so we want to get to column one and filter or return anything where column one or the second column is equal to our response variable So now that we have our filter variable in place, what we want to do is take this filtered data and insert a new sheet and display the filter results on this new sheet. So we're going to create a variable called new sheet that is going to be equal to our spreadsheet variable. And then we want to insert sheet with this new sheet. We want to get range, and we want a two-dimensional range because we're going to paste our two-dimensional filtered results. We're going to begin in row two because we're going to paste our headers um, here in a little bit. So we want to begin in column one, and <clears throat> the number of rows is going to change depending on our filter. So we need something dynamic here. So we're going to reference our filter array variable and get the length of that, which that will return the length of the rows in that two-dimensional array. So the number of columns we have, we're just going to input a hard number because we have five columns. And what we want to do is set the values of this array equal to our my filter variable that contains our filtered results. So we have one final variable we'll call headers. And that's just going to be the headers from our loan sheet. 
in range A1 through E1. So we're going to reference our loan sheet variable, get range. We'll just use A1 notation, A1 through E1. We want to get values. And I'm going to copy this because we're going to use it again. Because with our new sheet variable, we're going to get that exact same range and set the values equal to our headers variable. So another thing we need to deal with is some of the formatting issues because we have columns D and E that are in kind of a currency and percentage format. And when we paste these values into the new sheet, they're going to be in the general format. So what we want to do is with our new sheet, again, we want to get range. And this time we'll just refer to the entire column, column D. I'm going to set number format. And in double quotes, we'll just use like a currency format here. And do a similar thing for our column E with the percentages. So the final thing I want to add to our code is an else outcome to our if statement in the event the user presses cancel instead of OK. Now really the code we have would work fine, everything would work so long as the user hit OK. If they hit cancel nothing would happen as our code currently is, which may be what you want, but I just want to kind of show a second course of action based on the second button. So we'll just add an else statement and maybe just add like an alert message that says script canceled so we'll refer to our UI and then we'll just add a simple alert that says script canceled so we'll save our code here I am going to delete this button here because I need to show folks who've never done a button how to insert one. So we're going to go up to insert and then drawing. I usually just grab a rectangle or a square, draw it in there, and you can click in there and just type a title. So maybe like input value so now all we need to do is assign this to our script and our script name is called or function I should say my user input so we'll click on this little drop down here assign script put that in there we'll run this when I click on this now we're gonna have to authorize it so we'll click continue click on the Google account you're using go to advanced go to your project name down here at the bottom and then scroll down and allow now we'll probably have to click it one more time to actually run it again so we get our prompt we're going to filter on auto loans, so I'll click OK. A new sheet gets added with just the auto loans. I can run this again and input 
mortgage click OK and we get a sheet added with just mortgage loans I can hit cancel or the X button here and we should get our script canceled message so that is the second outcome of those two buttons for OK and cancel well that is all for now thanks for watching please remember to subscribe